I'm now going to explain the geometric interpretation of dot product. That is, a dot b is equal to the length of a times the length of b times the cosine of theta, where theta is the angle between the two vectors. Now, let's assume that the vectors a and b are both not zero. Otherwise, the dot product is zero, and this is not very interesting. Now, let's draw a picture. So here's the vector a. And here's the vector b. And this angle here is the angle theta. Now, the first step is I'm going to drop a perpendicular from b to a like this. What I mean more precisely is the following. I claim that there is a unique scalar c such that b minus c times a is perpendicular to a. So in the picture here, this piece of a, this is c times a. And then this dotted line, if I make it into a vector going up in the picture, then this vector is b minus c a. And I want this vector to be perpendicular to a. So I claim there's a unique c that makes that work. So the proof of this claim is let's solve for c. So I have b minus c a dot a equals zero. That's what it means for these two vectors to be perpendicular. And I can expand this dot product using the distributive property. So I get b dot a minus c a dot a equals zero. And I can pull the c out. So I can rewrite this as b dot a minus c times a dot a equals zero. So I didn't prove that you can pull a scalar out like this, but you can check that it works because here I just multiply every component by c. So when I take the dot product, it's just going to multiply the whole dot product by c. Okay, so now I can solve for c and I have c equals b dot a divided by a dot a and that's just the length of a squared. So I'll write it as length of a squared. And this is well defined. I'm not dividing by zero because a is not zero and so its length squared is not zero. It's a sum of squares and they're not all zero. All right. Now, what does that have to do with the cosine of theta? Well, what is the cosine of theta anyway? So the cosine of theta is the length of this adjacent side of the triangle divided by the length of the hypotenuse. So it's the length of CA divided by the length of B. That's actually not always true. It's true when the picture is as shown when C is bigger than zero. So if C is greater than or equal to zero. If c is less than zero, then um, the angle is going to be more than pi over two and the cosine is going to be negative. So the cosine of theta is minus the length of ca over the length of b if c is less than or equal to zero. And we can combine these two equations into one equation by writing it like this. We can write cosine of theta equals c times the length of a over the length of b. And this is true both when c is positive and when c is negative. All right, now we're almost done. So now we combine these two boxed equations. So I'm going to take my equation for cosine of theta and plug in my equation for c. So I get cosine of theta equals, so c here, is b dot a over the length of a squared. And then I multiply by the length of a over the length of b. And now I can cancel out the length of a here and cancel out this squared here. So I get cosine of theta is b dot a over length of a times length of b. And dot product is commutative, so that's also a dot b. So if you just clear the denominator, you get the equation we wanted. So that's the proof. By the way, the vector CA 
is called the orthogonal projection of B onto A. So we're not going to do too much with orthogonal projection in this course, but it's a useful concept in general. Okay, so that's it for dot product, and next we're going to work towards another product of vectors, the cross product.